I welcome all of you uh, for the introduction of the next course which we are planning. Uh, myself, Akul Sharma will be taking this course. So let us first start with brief introduction on what is CF. It's a methodology for simulation of fluid dynamics and heat transfer problem. It is as if that if you learn this course, you there are two things which you can do. You can create a movie which has a fluid dynamic or heat transfer representation. So, a fluid if you take a video camera, you can capture a movie for when aeroplane is moving, but that movie will be pictorial information. With this subject, you create a movie which has a fluid dynamic information in terms of flow properties like velocities, pressures and temperature. And you can also you not only create movies, but you also calculate the parameters which are of final interest to the engineers like drag force, lift force, pressure drop and so on. So, this uh, course results in uh, developing in, uh, CFD softwares by which you can create movies for fluid dynamics and uh, so it basically gives you the flow field information with res, uh, in time and it gives you the engineering parameter and it is uh, very useful in designing and analyzing engineering systems and processes. It is an open ended application of fluid mechanics and heat transfer problem. In fluid mechanics heat transfer, we use normally calculators, but in here, here you, what you can do is that you can do a lot of parametric investigation. So, it is an open ended application of the two codes. CFD reduces the cost and time of uh, designing and analyzing engineering system and it is slowly becoming part and parcel of a bigger pool which is called as computer aided engineering, which involves uh, solid modeling, CAD, finite element methods and CFD as well. Uh, in academics, this course is taught in various branches of engineering from civil, chemical, metallurgy, mechanical and so on. Uh, in industry, it is applied in diverse areas such as aerospace, automobile, turbo machinery, biomedical, electronic cooling and so on. There is an increased importance of CFD software development, application and analysis as well as this this need is from the Indian let us say industry and research organization as well as there is a lack of trained manpower in this subject. So, this gives us an importance of this course. However, there is a lack of trained teachers for this course. We have divided, we have carefully thought about the outline of the course taking into consideration the background of the most of the colleges who will be taking up this course. So, this course is not uh, exactly the way we teach in our CFD course in here in IIT. So, we have tried we are starting with some essentials for of CFD which we think are partly prerequisite for this course. So, we will talk uh, this will be taken by Professor Puranik. This includes fluid dynamics and heat transfer numerical methods essentials of those. Then discretization method finite difference method will be taken by Professor Puranik and I will take finite volume method. There are two major objective of this course. First to develop an appreciation of theory behind the screen because whenever you use a CFD software, uh, you do not have an understanding of what is happening behind the screen. And the second is to, so first uh, objective is regarding development, second objective is regarding application. Whenever you are using a software, you need to appreciate the application of CFD because in a CFD, it is not like a simple software, you have to very cleverly use it. So, you have to design your problems uh, in a very careful manner, the domain size, the boundary conditions. So, what we are planning is that we will have some uh, exercise problem which will uh, which we will expose you to. And with this two pronged approach of theory and application, uh, you will be firmly set to become a CFD expert in the academic as well as industrial field. So, the prerequisite of this course is undergraduate course on fluid mechanics and heat transfer and some introduction of numerical methods in computer programming. Now, Professor Puranik will discuss the first part of this course which he will be taking. So, we will begin uh, by um, deriving the governing partial differential equations for uh, fluid mechanics as well as heat transfer. I think you have already gone through some of those derivations, uh, possibly all of them uh, through this course. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, for completeness, what we will do is we will do the derivations anyways. 
maybe we can do it from a different point of view than how it has been done here. I'll find out from Professor Prabhu and Sridhar and how they are doing the derivations here. And accordingly, um, we'll decide whether to follow exactly the same approach or a different approach to finally arrive at the same set of uh, equations. If we do it differently, hopefully you will get a different perspective also. You can think about how this was done, how that was done and, and so on. Uh, in any case, uh, this is very important uh, step because in order to make sure that everyone is at the same uh, base before we in fact start talking about how to employ numerical methods to solve these, uh, we thought of making sure that everyone should go through a formal exercise of deriving these um, governing equations for fluid dynamics and heat transfer. After that, uh, we will begin with um, some basic uh, discussion on application of numerical methods. And um, it, it's a good uh, assumption here from my point that many of you will know this, the second point here, essentials of numerical methods that we have written, where we'll try to cover the basic ideas related to how you numerically find derivatives and integrals as well as if you have a um, linear system of equations, how do you solve that linear system of equations um, using certain very standard techniques called uh, the Gauss-Seidel type algorithms or the Thomas algorithm or the tridiagonal matrix uh, algorithm. So these are minimally required, I'll say, in order to go on and analyze a fluid dynamics and a heat transfer problem from the so-called uh, CFD point of view. Uh, then uh, there are two different approaches, very popular approaches for um, solving these governing equations using a computer. So one is what we normally call a finite difference method or a finite difference approach. Uh, what we plan to do here is uh, with respect to this finite difference approach, we will not solve the entire set of uh, governing equations for fluid mechanics and heat transfer. What we'll do is to illustrate how a finite difference technique works, we will come up with um, what we call model equations, which are simplified forms of the governing equations of fluid mechanics and heat transfer. So we will pick uh, typically uh, three types of model equations. They are what we call elliptic, parabolic, and hyperbolic equations. And these will be solved using these finite difference methods as first part of your formal CFD uh, introduction. Uh, and then there is some uh, small uh, affiliated uh, topic of uh, stability analysis, which is uh, not only useful for these finite difference methods, but will also be useful later for uh, the finite uh, volume approach, which uh, Professor Sharma will, uh, will teach. So my part in this course would be to cover whatever is projected uh, on this slide. So we'll start with the derivation of the governing equations, uh, introduce the essen absolute essentials of the numerical methods which are required to do a CFD analysis. And then I'll introduce the first approach of um, discretization, which we call finite differencing. Um, next one, to go back to the history of development of computational fluid dynamics, started with finite difference method. But slowly in the middle of the 80s, it was felt when uh, people tried to solve more challenging problems, like complex geometry problems. Uh, they came up with a finite volume method, which is uh, nowadays uh, commonly used in most of the CFD softwares. These are basically discretization methods, which are used to obtain algebraic equations. Because although the governing equations are partial differential equations, but in computer we solve set of linear algebraic equations. So I will take the finite volume method, uh, starting with uh, for a, here we will restrict to two dimensional cases. Uh, although the extension to three dimensional is straightforward. We will start with uh, heat conduction. So it's, we can, I can also call this a computational heat conduction. So I will start with a finite volume discretization of the heat conduction problem, explicit and implicit method of solution of the linear algebraic equations. Uh, whenever you want to develop a program or a software, there are certain implementation details which are required. So this will be discussed with the help of some figures and animations. I will also discuss the solution algorithm. Uh, there are some special topics on heat transfer such as multi-solid and non-linear heat conductions. So these are some of the special topics for heat conduction and some example problems. From conduction, we move on to heat convection uh, and one of the 
example problem is hydrodynamically fully developed thermally developing flow. So, it is an advection diffusion equation. This will be also starting with the finite volume method, uh, then we will I'll discuss the different advection schemes, solution algorithm and finally, some example problem. So, after completing the conduction and convection part, when you go to the fluid dynamics or the coupled fluid dynamics heat transfer problem, it is the combination of the conduction and convection which are diffusion and convection. So, and the only thing which is left to be discussed is the pressure, how to handle the pressure term which is the most challenging part of the CFD. So, this will be discussed again with finite volume method and uh, there is a pressure velocity uh, coupling which is needed to solve the CFD problem. This will be discussed for staggered as well as collocated grid. Staggered grid was used initially, but later on with the developments collocated grid are popular nowadays. Here also it will be discussed for explicit and implicit method, solution algorithm will be discussed and finally, end with some example problems. Uh, these are some of the reference book. Uh, however, these are we are not giving you any textbook because we do not following any textbook strictly, but these are some of the books in which with which you can refer. First is Tanil Anderson and Fletcher. Uh, second is an edited book by uh, Murlidhar and Sundararajan. Third is a book written by professor of our department, Professor Date. And the last is the most classic, one of the most classical book in CFD written by Patankar. So, the methodology of the instruction is it consists of two parts, lectures in the uh, first half and maybe one hour in the second half. And the mode of teaching will be uh, using both board and PowerPoint slides. Complete course material would be put up on the web immediately after the course. And regarding a lab part, uh, we had started working on because handling lab for CFD is one of the bigger issues as compared to the other courses. Uh, the way we had planned is that uh, we are developing programs uh, using open source software. And the idea is when you will come for the coordinator workshop, we will hand over the programs as well as the open source software. What we are planning is there is an open source software which is similar to MATLAB which is called as Scilab. Okay, so, we will hand you over the software, open source software as well as the programs which will be used in the laboratory sessions for the CFD course. And the software is such that it has its inbuilt graphics. So, the program will and even if you want to do some small some if you to do few lines of programming, it is quite easy. Okay. So, that way we have planned to develop programs which will be provided to the participants and they are expected to solve various CFD problems for various because in a CFD as it is an open ended applications, you can vary the governing parameters. So, the problems will be given where in the program you have to change some number and see the results. You are also expected to uh, plot and analyze the results. And the long term objective is that you should be able, able to develop your own programs. It is very clear what the expectations are, whatever will be taught in the course is something that we will expect you know and be able to do on your own uh, when you go back to your college. Uh, that is what really is written out here. So, I do not need to really read out what the expectations are. So, what the only one thing that I would like to add in addition to um, what is written out here is that we are very seriously thinking that uh, we will give you guys at the end of the course. Um, an assignment which you are expected to work on for maybe a week or so, wherein you will be required to develop a program to solve a certain problem. And we will be expecting that you will submit it back uh, to us. And only when the successful completion of that assignment is finished, um, really speaking the course is complete for, uh, for you. That is the idea. The reason is because CFD is one course which is I think Professor Sharma will agree completely. It's a truly hands-on course. You cannot read books and understand it. You have to sit on the computer and you have to go through, uh, as we say, getting your hands dirty. That is writing your own program, learning how to debug and so on. So the only way you will really have a reasonable confidence uh, in yourself as well as to go and teach this class eventually is by writing something on your own and making sure that um, you know exactly how to do it. Uh, I would like to highlight that um, by teaching this course, earlier I taught this course in, uh, in one of the NITs. I realized that and uh, the background of most of the participants in this course are one of the bigger, one of the problem is that although this course uh, is, can be taught mathematically intensive, but I had come up with a procedure by which 
even if your mathematical background is not that strong, uh, you can still get a more physical feel, which I call as a novel physics based finite volume method. The idea is shown by this three, uh, by a block diagram. Uh, we st start always with a control volume and uh, in a course on fluid mechanics or heat transfer, we derive partial differential equations. Now, in most of the CFD books, what they do is that they start with the dose differential equation. So, when we start teaching CFD starting with equations that to not algebraic, but differential equations, many time I had found that the students with uh, or the college teachers with not very strong mathematical background get scared. Okay. So, they follow Gauss divergence theorem and convert the differential equation to the algebraic equation. So, the traditional finite volume method is shown through green arrows. So, first derivation of partial differential equation, which is done in the fluid mechanics heat transfer, then algebraic equation done in a CFD course. What uh, finite volume method I will be teaching is that I will start with the same control volume with which you feel quite comfortable in the first lecture of maybe heat transfer or fluid mechanics course. So, from the same control volume, the same algebraic equation can be derived. So, this is what will be the methodology of the finite volume method which will be taught. See, this is the approach that Professor Sharma will follow in the finite volume discretization part, which will be about, I will say 60 percent of the course. Okay. So, the first 40 percent is what I will be dealing with and the remaining 60 percent is what he will be dealing with, with this finite volume uh, procedure. Uh, what I will point out to you that the first 40 percent, I will actually try to on purpose focus on the traditional side, just so that you get both uh, feels, so to say. that you know how you go from the green arrow as well is something that uh, that I would like to point out. And then later on in the second half is what um, uh, Professor Sharma will handle in a different manner as far as the discretization procedure is concerned. So, hopefully what we expect is that at the end of the class you will have have been exposed to both approaches of the traditional more sort of applied mathematics side uh, versus uh, more of an engineering approach of uh, going through a physical process. Yeah, that is a very important point uh, I forgot to mention. So, you will get both the flavors. So, you will get a feel at the end of the course, the mathematical as well as physical feel of the discretization. So, with this we had come to the end and we thanks all of you for your attention. If you have any question, we will be happy yeah, to yeah. answer. Uh, in this course, uh, in we have certain topic which is which are called as implementation details where we talk in detail about where how we will not show you the programming language, but without programming language at least flow chart will be clear to you. So, I think uh, this FOSI program is going, going on. Yeah. If I am right, already they, they are teaching SILAB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if that course is thoroughly on SILAB. Even if you have not attended that course, I am sure those uh, course are in the web. Yeah, yeah. are available, you can run through that and make yourself comfortable. Comfortable with Sailab and then come over here. I think uh, what yeah. we will try to do is to not only explain the flowchart, but possibly even try to give you a pseudo code for the, the program. Correct. Finally, just a matter of uh, putting it in the Sailab syntax. What is a pseudo code? Pseudo code is essentially just a step by step procedure uh, which they have to simply code it in a particular syntax, whatever language. So, for example, I am very sure that some of these people are used to C or C or Fortran perhaps. So, that pseudo code is something like a generalized algorithm which you can just look at and then put it in any syntax. Yeah, yeah. pseudo code will also be provided. And secondly, we will give you for lab session the program which are already written in scilab. So, you will get some feel of the syntaxes also, but actually homework assignment as you had mentioned will come af after the course if you do that for work for one, uh, one week and if you have any questions you can get back to us. Any other question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we are not introducing you to a CFD software. Okay, so open for is a CFD software. Yeah. Let's say commercial software such as Fluent or Star CD or CFX. They are also CFD software. Our purpose is not to introduce a CFD software. It's a programming environment, which is an open source, is what we want to introduce you to. And by you know by that token. Keep in mind that the kind of programs that we will discuss here as well as we will expect you to write are not extremely complicated 
um, so as to solve some heavy real life situation. Okay, we want to make sure that the ABCs of CFD are covered correctly, so that when you go back to your colleges and go through these material again and again, hopefully then when you use a CFD software, possibly later, you will be able to use it more intelligently. That's that's the idea. Okay, thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.